All right, what's going on everyone? So my name is Junior and today I want to talk to you all about the stock market. Um, I've got my two little helpers here. They're going to help me out as far as um, giving me my markers and things like that while I'm uh, telling you all about you know how the stock work. I uh, won't get too much into actually investing into the stock market uh, using one of the brokerage accounts or something like that, but uh, that might be a separate video for later. I just want to today kind of show you all you know what a stock market or what a stock is um, and how to I guess go around the beginning stages uh, of understanding it so that you can you know successfully invest in it. So can I get a marker, please? Thank you. All right. So what is a stock? A stock is pretty much just a part of a company. So let's say we have here company A. If you when that company um, goes public, the first off when a company gets started, the new business stuff like that, uh, they get they start off as a private company. But as time goes on, they're able to become a public company and then they can sell shares of the company. So each share of company A here can be sold off to the public to where now we own a part of that actual company. So uh, let's say 100% or 100% of the company is owned by its internal members, like the CEO, um, its board, uh, directors and stuff like that. But as soon as a um, company goes public and people like me, uh, myself or you, end up buying parts of this company, we now own a piece of it. So let's say person one owns, I don't know, 0.01% of the company, uh, person two, and it all depends on how much money that you actually invest into the company. Person two might own, uh, let's say 0.5% of company A here. Um, can I get the eraser? Thank you. So with that being said, I wanted to kind of jump into um, uh, more about the stock itself. There you go. And for that, I have a prop here. I've got some candy here. Let me get one. Thank you. All right. So let's say this here is company A, uh, Haichu. They sell candy, of course, and we would like to buy a part of that company. So there we go. So once they go public, they can now sell parts of their company. So let's say that we sold him one and they sold him two over here. And for me, I took three pieces. So each share of their company, they now lose to our investment. Um, there is chances where they can actually buy it back. Um, that's basically calling selling your, your shares. We sell it back to the company or we can sell it to other people as well. But now I own three shares of Haichu. Let me get another one. Another one? Nope. Yep. Come right there. Oh. Now we have here company B, Starburst. I'm sure we all are familiar with Starburst. So now Starburst is a public company. We can go out and buy shares of Starburst. So let's say he's going to buy three shares. <laughs> Him over here is going to buy two shares this time. And I'm only going to take one share of Starburst. All right. All right. So now that I have a share of Starburst, uh, whenever Starburst makes money, I make money. If Starburst loses money, I also lose money. And all this depends on how much I actually put into uh, their shares, their stock market. Um, and it's always a good idea not to only put your money into one company. For example, that reason that I gave you, if Starburst loses money, then that means I lose money also. But when uh, Haichu, when they make money, I make quite a bit of money from them because I have three shares of Haichu and one share of Starburst. So my portfolio will look something like this. Um, let's call it S for Starburst, and we're going to call it H for Haichu. Um, as soon as I buy the stock, let's say it goes this way, make some money, lose some money, make some money, lose some money, makes a whole lot of more money, make some money, lose some money, comes down, lose a whole bunch of money. Same with Haichu. If I bought that in the same, on the same day, they make some money, lose some money all the way around. So my portfolio looks something like that. And actually, I'm going to uh, erase it, please, and another color for the uh, marker. 
Uh, just to make this a little bit more clear for you all, I'm going to actually put this in a different color. All right. And then for Starburst. All right. So at any given point or any given time, uh, let's say this is what uh, these are in months. One month, two months, three months, four months, five months. At two months in, you see, I don't have a lot of money in um, Haichu, but at two months in Starburst, they made a whole lot of money. So that was actually good for me. Likewise, over here at four months in, Haichu was actually higher than Starburst. So at this point in time, I actually made more money with Haichu than I did with Starburst. The thing about the stock market is that you really want to buy your shares at a low price and you want to sell them at a higher price. This is what actually makes you money. So if Starburst started off at, or I get the black market. So if Haichu started off at, uh, let's say $15 per share. So I buy it at $15. And then over here we have our uh, ending price. Let's just say $100. And over here we have Starburst. Let's say this is $42 per share. And again, they're at, uh, just well, just to make it a little bit different, I'm going to actually tank that. And now Starburst is at, um, let's just say, $8. All right. So based on this graph, if you had a whole lot of money in Starburst, after five months, you would have ended up losing money. You would have lost uh, 42 minus 8, which would give you uh, 32. Uh, no. 34, I believe. So with Starburst, your five month investment, you would have lost. So you would have had, um, uh, what was I say? 34. You would have had a negative $34 here. But down here with Haichu, You would have netted, actually, you would have profited uh, 15 to, so that's what, 85. So you would have had a positive $85. So this is why you always want to buy low and sell high. Um, again, these are just arbitrary numbers, but over a five month period, you could potentially make a lot of money into the stock market, or you could actually lose a lot of money. And then again, it all depends on each share. So this is the dollar price for just one share. So if I just had one share of Starburst, I only lost $34 over a five month period. But since I have three, cha three shares of Haichu, this is my investment times three, over three times. So it will not just be a positive 85, it will be positive 85 times three, three times five is 15, uh, eight times three is 24, 25, so it would actually be a investment or a profit of $255. Uh, and I hope you all can see that down there. Um, angle the camera just a little bit. Uh, so it, I would actually make $255 that way. All right, let me see the eraser for me. Thank you. Now, there are a bunch of different investment options when you go into uh, the stock market. So one option is just those stocks, kind of how I showed you. There is another option called um, mutual funds and ETFs. Mutual funds and ETFs are um, uh, ex exchange traded, um, what is it, ETF, exchange traded funds, I believe, and mutual funds, uh, bonds, they are all kind of similar. <clears throat> they just have a little bit of differences to them. Um, but there are uh, stocks, ETFs, mutual funds, uh, there's Forex, there is cryptocurrency, uh, there's options, there's futures, a whole bunch of different investment options that you can actually get into when you are investing in the stock market. Um, but it all just depends on how do you want your portfolio. And what I mean by portfolio is 
your list of companies that you have like in your bank or in your purse or whatever. Um, so let me see how I want to how I want to do this. Well, here. So if you want to go over mutual funds, give me the other candy, please. Yep. Oh, so this here is a mutual fund. The party size minis of whole bunch of chocolates. This is how mutual funds work. You would actually, when you buy a mutual fund, you actually buy all of these companies at once. So before I showed you um, the, the option of buying one stock of each company, this one actually gives you multiple stocks in multiple companies. So I'm just going to grab a handful here. So grabbing a handful here. Hold this one, please. All right. So I've got three stocks or three shares of Snickers. I've got one share of Twix, one share of Milky Way, or actually two shares of Milky Way, and three shares of, uh, what's these, three Musketeers. So I've actually got quite a bit here. And with all of these, So we're going to call this our mutual fund. Uh, we've got three Musketeers. We've got Twix. We've got Snickers. And we've got Milky Way. All right. So this is our total um, mutual fund. But within the mutual fund, they're doing its own thing. So we've got that going with that way. Um, our Twix is doing something else. Uh, can you get that for me, please? Our Snickers is doing something else. And I don't have a fourth color, but we're just going to use blue again for Milky Way here. Um, and that's doing its own thing also. Now. To us, it doesn't really matter what each one of these are doing as long as the total mutual fund is going up. It's going up and to the right. Um, you'll hear that quite often too, up and to the right, just because of how uh, when you're looking at a graph for it, your investment could go up and to the right or down and to the right. Um, it can never really go left because that's backwards in time. We're always going forwards in time. But you'll hear it quite often, uh, up and to the right or down and to the right. Um, so as long as our mutual fund is going up and to the right, it's okay for us because we're not going to lose a whole lot of money based on our total investment. So let's say, for example, if Three Musketeers was the only company that's going down in, in um, stock price, but all three of the other companies going up, our average would end up being positive. Our average would end up being up and to the right based on that. All right, here you go. Hold this for me, please. Yep, whole bunch of candy. All right. Um, so again, when you get into the stock market, um, one thing that you have to think about is how the company is doing. You have to do research on the actual company to determine. And I'm just kind of looking for my eraser here. Where's your eraser at, buddy? Yeah. OK, thank you. He's got candy in his hands. He can't give me the eraser. All right. And again, I'm just giving you all these options, um, depending on what your uh, strategy is for your portfolio, how you want it to look and stuff like that will kind of determine more about how exactly you want to invest. Um, me personally, I, I invest a certain way, which is mainly in uh, options and futures and mutual funds, uh, ETF, stuff like that, mainly because I'm looking for the long term investment, uh, looking for more of a long term investment versus short term. But, you know, some people do short term investments where um, uh, well, actually, actually, options and, and futures are a, a little bit more short term, um, but it depends on, you know, how, how much of a risk you wanted to get into. But some people do also penny stocks. Uh, those are just the ones that are, you know, kind of just starting off where literally the name says it all, where you can really get a stock uh, of a company for a penny. Um, so the way that the stock market works, and I showed you the graph about it going up in price or down in price and stuff like that. Um, the way that the stock market works is this. 
So let's say we have, well, we got Starburst. So let's say we have in Starburst, we have a whole bunch of shares in Starburst. Starburst. Let's say we have 100 shares in Starburst and each share, whoops, each share is worth, uh, let's say, $10 just to make life easy. So our 100 shares in Starbucks or our, yeah, our 100 shares in Starbucks each worth $10, that comes out to being uh, our total investment for Starbucks, $1,000, if I did my math right. Yeah, so we are now uh, $1,000 into Starburst. But let's say, for example, the president of the United States, uh, Mr. Donald Trump, he went out and said, hey, I really like Starburst. I went out and ate some Starburst. Um, Starburst was amazing. He says a whole bunch of positive, good things about Starburst. You know what's going to happen to Starburst? Just because the president said that he liked it, well, the stock or the, um, yeah, the stock price of Starburst now goes up in price. So Starburst is now worth, um, so we're going to make a timeline here. This is our initial investment. So this is our initial investment. Uh, we're going to call this Trump tweet. So after Trump tweeted that he really likes Starburst, where's the blue? Thank you. After Trump tweeted that he really likes Starburst, well, we didn't buy or sell any of our shares. So we still have uh, 100 shares. But now, since Trump tweeted really good, positive things about uh, Starburst, our shares are now worth $20. And literally, that's how it works. If anything in the market happens that is positive for a company, the stock market is, or the, um, uh, the price of this actual stock moves. You'll see it move up and down, and it goes based on uh, just basically what happens out in the world. Um, if you saw Zoom, I know, I'm pretty sure you all are familiar with Zoom right now, and their stock, their, their stock price went up in price because they now became a more valuable company. So it's all about the value of that company, how much their actual stock is worth. The company didn't grow or um, uh, get smaller or anything like that, but they just became more valuable to people. So when Trump tweeted that, hey, I really like Starburst, it became more valuable, their stock price went up. So now our investment or inside our portfolio is no longer $1,000, it's now $2,000. And it's literally that simple. And the same way that it goes up, let me get the black one, please. Thank you. The same way it goes up, it goes down as well. So let's say now Trump tweeted out something else a month later. And he went, he got a bag of Starburst. He got food poisoning from it. Uh, may have not been from it, but he said on a tweet, I hate Starburst. Um, I hate Starburst. They gave me food poisoning. He said a whole bunch of negative things about it in his tweet. So now, again, you didn't sell any stock or you didn't sell any shares. You didn't buy any share. You still have your initial 100 shares. But now, since that tweet happened, oops. Uh, since that tweet happened, it is now only worth, uh, just make math easy, $1. So your 100 share that you still have is now only worth $1 a piece, gives you a $100 investment in Starburst. So I hope you all can kind of see and understand how this kind of works. Um, a major, major, major push for it is, um, uh, what's it called? Supply and demand as well. So are there more shares available in the company versus not in the company? Um, that happens a lot in business, but another part of it really is just what the market is doing. Um, again, with the coronavirus pandemic that happened, Zoom, they might, might have only been worth $5 per share, but now they might be worth $500 per share. Um, sorry about that. Don't spin, please. Um, they might now be worth $500 per share, basically because they became more valuable. Everybody is using Zoom now, and I mean everybody, even people who uh, didn't even think they would be using Zoom. Little kids are using Zoom for school and stuff like that, so they became a lot more valuable company 
to the market. Um, airline company, their stock prices tank. The reason being is because nobody's flying. They are not a valuable company at the moment. Um, so their shares, their shares are not worth as much because nobody's really using them. Uh, let me get the eraser, please. Thank you. All right. All right. Um, so the way to get into the stock market, there are two ways. I'm only really going to talk about one way because that's the way that I know. That's the way that I'm more familiar with. Um, well, there may be more other ways than these two, but again, the way that I do it is called a uh, self self. Um, uh, uh, you're using a self provided brokerage firm. Um, or you could use an actual brokerage firm that do uh, that does all the uh, stock trading and, and stuff like that for you. There are a bunch of uh, places out there which in, in which you can hire to manage your portfolio, or you can actually do it yourself. I believe a company called um, uh, well, there's a couple of them out there. So Robinhood, um, Acorn, and I believe Stash. Uh, all three of those are pretty good companies uh, in which you can handle your own investments by yourself. They're like personal uh, brokerage firms. Um, those are really the first ones that I saw that came out there that allowed you to be able to do this. I'm pretty sure there's pretty probably been other ones out that were able to do it, but with the technology of cell phones and stuff like that, um, those ones created apps, which make it real or which made it really easy, uh, in order to do that. Other ones that are kind of like major companies that I've heard in the past, um, are TD Ameritrade. You might've heard of E-Trade. They, they are all, um, self-guided investment firms, um, and also Fidelity, I believe, also. Um, and I can't think of another one. I think JP Morgan might be one that allows you to do that. I think JP Morgan may be just, um, what's it called? They, they might be the broker for you rather than allowing you to be your own individual broker. But either way it goes, you can get into the stock market those ways. One thing you have to kind of remember, though, is or, so the key things to remember are the commission fees. I believe Robinhood and Acorn and Stash, uh, they either have little to no commission fees at all. TD Ameritrade, Fidelity, and E-Trade, I believe they do. They may not have any fees as far as actually getting into the brokerage, like creating your own account. But then once you start trading, once you start buying and selling and stuff like that, you may have to get um, or charge a fee. If you wanted to get into things such as uh, cryptocurrency and Forex, I don't believe, I don't believe Fidelity, uh, TD Ameritrade, stuff like that. They allow you to do cryptocurrency or Forex. But if you get into more like uh, uh, using Robinhood or using Acorn, I believe, I know Robinhood for sure, but Acorn and Stash, I'm not sure about that. So that's something you have to look into. Uh, there is a case where you can also buy partial stocks. So let's say uh, a stock of Apple. We all know Apple is a big company. Um, Microsoft. Let's say Facebook, heck, Amazon, got Netflix, all these big companies, their stock price might be upwards to $1,000. So their stock price might be $100, $200, $300 just for one share. And the thing about those, although that might seem like a good investment, it can turn out not to be. Uh, reason being because that over time, their price might not move as much. So you have a company that's, let's say, $768. Over the course of just one year, one year later, they might only be worth $769. Well, to you, that might not be worth it. $1 over one year might not be the way that you want to go. But if you have a company out there that, let's say, they're worth $60, and over that course of same, same one year, they're now worth $125. My dollar sign's up there. That might be a whole lot more worth it to you. So again, it depends on if you want to invest long-term, if you want to invest short-term, and you have to look at how the actual company moves. Uh, there are companies out there that actually pay out dividends. Um, and if you look in more into that, that's actually a good thing also to where every time the company makes money, 
they actually give you a little bit of, it's like a bonus. They actually give you a little bit of money as well just because you invested in, in money into the company. Um, and I guess I didn't say too much about that. So when you're investing into the company, you're not just buying shares. You're actually helping to grow the company. So the company, let's say company A here, they have different departments in which they, uh, in which they have to grow their company. So they have their sales department, they have marketing, they have research and design, which we're going to call R&D. Um, I don't know. They might have like logistics or something like that. So when you're investing into this company, let's say you put $100 into this company, they might actually divvy up all this money to fund these parts of the company. So your initial $100 might get broken down to $25 here. Uh, What's this? Thirty dollars here. Let's say forty dollars here. And make sure I do a math right. Four, seven, ninety-five. So they might only put five dollars there. And again, let me just double check that. Okay. Yep. Um, so what you're actually doing when you invest in a company, you're actually putting money towards different departments for them so they can grow as a company. Uh, they need to do marketing. Let's say Dell computers or something like that. They need to do marketing so people are aware of the company. They know who they are. They know what products they are. Um, research and design, how to make new computers, how to make them slimmer. Uh, like Apple, they have a whole bunch of different computers out there. Uh, they make them slimmer. They are not computers. They have different phones out there and tablets. Um, they have the Air, AirPods and stuff like that. All of the investment that we put into the company help fund the company so that they can grow. And as they grow, they give out what we call dividends. So it's kind of like a return on your investment. You'll hear that often also. ROI is your return on investment. Um, and it's kind of like a, 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 a thank you for investing into our company. They'll give you some dividends. So oftentimes, uh, companies don't give those out. But if you can find a company that does, this is a really good thing to so where you can actually make uh, residual income every single month uh, without having to sell it. You have you still own your same share that you had, um, but for holding it, they give you dividends on top of that. Um, let's see. So I think that is all about it. I do have a couple of notes here. Um, Oh, and one thing I also want to mention, so the companies that I listed as far as brokerage firms and brokerage apps and stuff like that, you don't exactly have to go with those. But if you do find a company that you wish to go with, uh, make sure that you are being safe with them. Um, security is a big thing when you're spending a whole bunch of money on a company. So you want to make sure that your, your money is secure and to where you're putting it at. So make sure the company is uh, SIPC, I think it's SIPC. Um, uh, protected. If it is not, uh, I would hesitate, you know, greatly in order before I go with that company and not the company that you're investing in. It's the actual brokerage uh, account that you're setting up with. So uh, the Robinhood, the Acorn, the Stash, um, the TD Ameritrade, Fidelity, E-Trade, I believe all of those are SIPC accredited, but not all companies out there are. So if you find a new one, you may want to look into whether they are or not. Um, uh, so yeah, I think that is all it for right now. Uh, like I said, I won't be getting too much into actually investing into the stocks. Um, one thing, if you, when you get into investing it, we want to make sure that you, uh, uh, you don't put in too much that you, uh, aren't willing to lose. So let's say, if you get paid every single Friday from your job or something like that, and you have a whole bunch of bills, don't put your whole paycheck into the stock market. I urge you, urge you, urge you not to put your whole paycheck into the stock market because there is great risk to it. Like I showed you before, your money could um, increase or you could lose money. So Again, this is <clears throat> this time we're going to do this in weeks. And
eight weeks, so two months, um, you have your uh, initial investment here. And I don't know, like company A. So, well, actually, this is not, this would be, this would be a uh, dollar amount. <clears throat> and this would title be company A. All right. So uh, where's the red one? There you go. So now what you have here is that let's say on week one, you get paid on that Friday and you would like to put you know some money into it. Again, don't put your whole paycheck into it. What you want to do is spread out your investment. So only put in enough that you are willing to lose. So when you create your budget, if you don't have a budget yet, no big deal. But I urge you when you're getting to the stock uh, market investing, you create a budget for it. And what you want to do is create a budget for this. So let's say if your paycheck is $100 and let's say all your bills might add up to about $50. Just keep numbers easy. Uh, I wish all my bills were $50. But after that $50, you might want to put towards um, um, short-term savings, long-term savings. Um, you might want to put towards, um, uh, what is it called, emergency funds, stuff like that. But then you can also put a separate fund for a stock market and you put in, let's say, $10. So you put in the initial $10 here and you just kind of watch it. You kind of watch, you know, what you're going to say. This is 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Um, and again, the amount of money that you put in is based on how much the actual stock for the company is. You can't uh, just put in $10. Well, I think I mentioned before that uh, what you can do is buy parcel stocks. Uh, there are also companies out there that allow you to do parcel stocks, so you won't have to exactly buy a whole share. Um, oh, I think I started to mention it, but then it finished. But let's say like a company like Apple, Microsoft, stuff like that, they might be worth a whole bunch of money for each stock, but you might not have $1,000 just to spend on one uh, share for that company. Uh, some investment brokerages, they allow you to only buy like a portion of it, like 0.1%. Uh, 5% of an actual share. Um, so, but this, in this example, we're just actually talking about a whole share. So say your whole share is worth $10, you bought it, and the stock market is moving like this, all right? And this is actually not too bad. This is how the stock market always works. No matter what you get into, uh, there is a risk of it going up, and there's a risk of it coming back down. It's always going to work like that. Uh, so if you're afraid of losing money, just be aware that you will lose money. Um, but the thing is that you won't lose money physically if you keep your money into the stock market. So if I, um, if I put in $10 here after a whole month, four weeks, the price is down to here, I technically lost money. But since my money is still inside the stock market, I haven't lost it completely. It is still uh, it has the potential to grow. So let's say from there, I don't know, company A has had a lot of news and is doing this now. It's up there. So if you are a type of person who wants to watch the stock market every single day, every single minute, every single hour, um, there is a greater chance of you actually losing money only because you might sell your shares at, uh, at too early of a time. So again, the stock market is always gonna do one thing, it's going to go up and to the right, but it all depends on what time frame that you're looking at it as. So if you look at it, if you ignore all of this and just look at the first four weeks, the first month, you will see that you actually end up losing money. So if you would have sold, if you would have sold your uh, share at this time here, you'd have actually lost money physically, not just uh, virtually in a stock market, you would have actually lost some money because you accepted you accepted your uh, money back at a lower price. But say if your best friend, you told your best friend, hey, I found this great company, $10 a share. What we're going to do is going to buy into that company. Your best friend held out eight weeks. Your best friend held out two months. Your best friend would be a very happy person right now while you're being sad because they end up selling the prices higher. They put in their same $10, your, both your $10 did the same thing in the stock market, but you just sold too early. 
they sold later on and they're actually work, um, they actually have a higher amount than you do based on when you actually sell it. Again, all of this uh, all depends on what the market does. Uh, Trump might tweet something, pandemic might happen. Um, I don't know, any, anything can, can happen with the stock market. Somebody sneezed and I don't know, something happened, but it all depends on when are you going to actually sell. Um, the bad part about it is that you don't know what's gonna happen. Nobody knew coronavirus was gonna hit. Nobody knew the airline company would tank. Um, nobody knew that when you go to, I don't know, say downtown or something like that, and you're trying to look for a parking spot, you won't even be able to find um, a parking spot or something like that. Uh, Airbnb, hotel industry, a lot of companies were hit by the coronavirus and nobody saw it coming. So it doesn't matter at point that you sell, just try to sell at a higher point than you than you put in initially. Uh, so anywhere up here would have been great. Any of these up here. Once you got down below here, that's not a time to sell. Wait, hold out. Um, or if you find yourself about to break even, so break even point is about here, this line. So if you would have sold right here, you had at least kept the same amount of money that you put in there's the same amount of money that you would have gotten out. Um, so yeah, I think that's is all about it for right now. Can't think of anything anything else to kind of uh, give you all to make sure that you understand how the stock market works. Um, definitely, there's nothing to be afraid of. Definitely, there's no reason to be scared to get into the stock market because it's going to do the same thing. It's always going to be something that moves to, uh, the price of a stock up or down. But you just have to make sure that if it goes down, you don't put in a lot of money that you're going to uh, go bankrupt just because you lied. Put in only as much as you're willing to lose because there's always a risk to it. Um, and also remember that if you hold out longer, again, this is just arbitrary times. So this this uh, here might just be for, um, I don't know, like Zoom or something like that. This might be Zoom's actual stock market, what happened, and then coronavirus happened here, and then it just shot up. Uh, every company is different. You have to kind of research the company and also research the industry. Um, when I talk about the airline industry, there's Delta Airlines, American Airlines, um, there's Spirit, JetBlue, there's a whole bunch of different companies that within that industry. And what you have to do is research that industry in order to find out, okay, is this a good company to get into? Uh, right now, what's going on real big is, like I said, Zoom, uh, Zoom conferencing. Uh, I think Google now has its own uh, um, conferencing, I think that like Google Meet, Google Hangouts or whatever, that might be a good industry to get into as well. Um, a lot of stuff going to virtual, so those might be good good things to get into. Um, but without giving you my, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not a professional broker or something like that, so I can't really give you um, investment tips or whatever. But this is just what I've seen. This is what I've learned. I just wanted to share this all with you. Um, with you. Uh, so definitely go out there, do some research. If you have any questions. Feel free to let me know. Uh, I'm here to kind of help you all answer any questions that you have the best way I can, kind of show you this, the breakdown of everything. And um, um, and uh, make sure make sure you all kind of make money. If we're, we're in the stock market to make money, not lose money. Um, so yeah, thank you all for watching this video and I'll see you all next time.